Nobody does romantic scandal quite like the royals, and nothing makes that clearer than these controversial moments. In the summer of 1936, the American socialite Wallace Simpson filed for divorce from her second husband. Meanwhile, King Edward VIII was just wrapping up his first six months on the British throne. The two were madly in love. But from the perspective of the British royal establishment, this match simply would not do. As a foreigner and a divorcee, Wallace was far from the blue-blooded stock considered fit for a king. Despite all of this, when Edward decided to spend his summer months boating in the Adriatic Sea, Wallace accompanied him. Writing about this trip in his memoir, A King's Story, Edward called, the first ten days we steamed southward, down the Dalmatian coast, calling at picturesque old towns or island fishing villages, and stopping for a picnic and swim whenever a fine sandy beach was spotted. Unfortunately, however, these light-hearted antics didn't last for long, as photographers trailed Edward and Wallace from town to town. In his book, the King explained, "...the American press had become fascinated with my friendship with Wallace and now pursued us everywhere." Indeed, photographers captured Edward and Wallace during their romantic seaside moments, and the scandalous pictures quickly landed in the papers. It was bad enough that these shots exposed the king's naked chest to the world, but they also unveiled his secret romance with Wallace, stirring up a storm of controversy that would have cataclysmic consequences for the House of Windsor. These days, Prince Philip is remembered as Queen Elizabeth II's husband of almost seven decades. He is someone who doesn't take easily to compliments, but he has quite simply been my strength and stay all these years. Back in the 1940s, however, Philip was not necessarily viewed as the most suitable match for the future queen. Speaking at the Cheltenham Literary Festival, royal biographer A. N. Wilson revealed, when she made it quite clear from the age of about 14 that she was in love with Prince Philip, who was a beautiful German prince with blonde hair, all the courtiers said he was entirely the wrong person to choose. Nonetheless, Elizabeth remained steadfast in her desire to wed Philip. During the early days of their courtship, the prince went to watch Elizabeth star in a theatrical pantomime of Aladdin. Apparently, the princess was incredibly incredibly excited about Philip's attendance. A piece in The Express quotes Elizabeth's governess, Marianne Crawford, who recalled the event as saying, "...I have never known Lilibet more animated. There was a sparkle about her none of us had ever seen before." By the courtship standards of the day, this was a big moment for Elizabeth. But for many courtiers, Philip's mere presence at the play would have likely been a matter of controversy. In 1953, Princess Margaret and Captain Peter Townsend were very much in love. Some reports indicate that the two fell for each other when Margaret was only 17 years old, in fact. Indeed, when Daily Mail columnist Craig Brown was researching for his biography about Margaret, he discovered something surprising. On a 1947 trip to Belfast, Townsend had requested the hotel room adjoining Margaret's. At the time, he was just weeks away from his 33rd birthday. However, age was not the reason why Townsend would never be considered a suitable match for the princess. The bigger issue was that the captain was married to another woman at the beginning of his romance with Margaret. In practice, this meant that Townsend could only be with the princess if he filed for a divorce. In the more conservative days of the 1950s, this was a major no-go. Although Margaret and Townsend tried to keep their relationship under wraps, everything ultimately came to light at Queen Elizabeth's coronation in 1953. At the event, the two shared a romantic moment when Margaret plucked a bit of flour off her lover's jacket. Unfortunately, a journalist noticed the unusual gesture. Speaking in the documentary Scandals at the Palace, royal historian Richard Fitzwilliams explained, "...that gesture of the bit of fluff went right around the world." Charles and Diana are notorious for the later years of their difficult relationship, but they weren't the only royal couple in crisis during the 1990s. The king's younger brother, Prince Andrew, and his then-wife Sarah Ferguson also struggled in their marriage. The pair officially separated in the spring of 1992. Now, it's not a fairy tale, it's real life in there. Shortly after the breakup, Sarah headed off to the south of France with her financial advisor, John Bryan. And it didn't take too long for the unlikely duo to cozy up in Sarah's Saint Tropez home. The two frolicked together by the pool where the Duchess of York caught some rays. Speaking to the Daily Mail years after the fact, Brian recalled, "...we were in a private villa with seven acres of land surrounding us to ensure our absolute privacy. The girls were tiny, just four and two. We were out by the pool and I was practicing swimming with the children." In this secluded environment, Brian leaned over and kissed Sarah's toes. Unbeknownst to the lovebirds, however, a photographer was hiding in the garden of the property. Photos were taken, images hit the press, and soon enough, the entire world caught a glimpse into what Brian told the Daily Mail was a family moment. Sadly, Sarah would pay the price for her unsuitable romance. Rumour has it that Prince Philip was so disgusted by the incident that he stopped speaking to her shortly after. In the weeks leading up to Princess Diana's death, both Diana and Dodie Fayed were making headlines for their blossoming relationship. This was especially apparent when, less than a month before that fateful crash, Diana called the paparazzi to divulge her holiday plans. 
Indeed, the princess let the press know that she would be aboard Dodie's yacht in the Mediterranean. An avalanche of pictures ensued, featuring a scantily clad Diana kissing her new boyfriend, cuddling with him and even receiving a pat on the backside. Naturally, these scandalous photos caused quite the uproar. For many fans of the British royal family, it was astonishing to see someone with such a high rank so clearly break protocol. Unfortunately, though, this astonishment gave way to uncensored judgment. Some of the press attention surrounding Diana's romance with Dodie was borderline cruel. As royal biographer Sally Bedell Smith later told USA Today about the media coverage of Diana's new relationship, there had been a crescendo of salacious headlines in the weeks before she died. Three weeks of the wildest tabloid coverage ever seen, tearing Dodie apart, turning on Diana. It was highly unusual. In the end, this negative coverage would only contribute to the overall feeling that the media was responsible for the couple's deaths. As Prince Edward grew up, he noticed his older brothers struggling in their marriages. Their respective wives, Princess Diana and Sarah Ferguson, struggled to transition into royal life. So, when it became Edward's turn to fall in love, he appeared to proceed with caution. In the early days of his romance with Sophie Rhys Jones, Edward tried his best to slowly introduce Sophie to the intricacies of royal living. Part of his strategy was inviting his girlfriend to spend the night inside palace walls. Apparently, this arrangement was meant to help Sophie decide if she could handle the pressure of palace life. By the time she and Edward were engaged, Sophie was said to know exactly what she was getting herself into. Unfortunately, though, the arrangement caused a stir when Diana and Sarah found out. After all, the women wondered why they weren't given the same chance to learn about royal life. Diana reportedly asked Sarah, why is she getting such an easy ride? We were thrown to the wolves. 